income tax 2022-2023 capital gain or loss tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website irs.gov irs.gov starting point single filer we've got then no dependents hundred thousand w2 income 12 support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it 1950 for the standard deduction getting us to that 87,050 mirroring that over here on our excel worksheet in a formula format 100,000 12,950 there's the 87,050 page two we're going to rely on the tax software to do the calculation which is important when we talk now about the capital gains because we could have a scenario then where we have favorable tax rates if we're talking about long-term capital gains currently that's at 14774 then we said there's 15,000 withholdings getting us down to the 226 on the bottom line there's the 226 okay we're going to be talking about the capital gains now so if i go back on up to page one now we might dive into capital gains uh, in more depth in a future presentation. Right now we just want to get a, a general idea that the capital gains of course are another type of income that will be flowing into page one uh, of the form 1040 often populating or going through the other form of the uh, schedule D. So for most people you'll get like a 1099 something that will look something like this. It'll have a B on it. So if your financial institution you do business with, you might then have interest from them, dividends from them, which will be a 1099 interest or 1099 div. And then also they might give you a 1099B, which not, might not look exactly like this, but will have the key fields, hopefully, in order to do the population, that being the proceeds, what you got, they should have that for sure. And the date that you sold it, they should have that for sure. And then hopefully they can estimate or get or provide the date that was acquired acquired which is the more difficult field for them to to populate because you might have had the stock before you were doing business with that particular institution and then the cost is also another area of complexity because hopefully they can provide you that but you might have had the stock before you dealt with them and there might have been various stock splits you might have inherited the stock and all this complicates what the value or cost of the stock uh, would be. So that's the thing that we got to be aware of that we can run into problems with first uh, of all. Also note that you might have like a summary uh, from your financial institution that will give you the total proceeds. And then you might have to go to the, the detail to get more information about all the sales that were taking place. Also realize that if you're in a situation for most clients, their investments are under the umbrella of an IRA or a 401k, even though they're invested in stocks, for example. And that would mean that when they when they actually uh, are in retirement, then they're going to get then they're going to get the the 1099 R most likely. And you'll have to pay ordinary income because you got a tax benefit when you put the money in to that type of retirement account. You'll have the 1099 B typically from stocks that were sold, possibly from like a day trader type of situation or someone that has investments, which would be good to have outside of the umbrella of an IRA for like the short term needs or if they've maxed out what they can put into an IRA or 401k plan. And then when you sell those items, that's when you would expect to be receiving uh, something like a 1099B. We could have gains, we could have losses related uh, to the sale uh, as well. So let's then populate this over here. We're going to say, all right, 
Uh, there was a sale that took place. We've got this 1099B. So I'm going to go in and say that we have income. And let's say it was an income from Schedule D. And then I'm going to populate something like now the, the quantity would be how much we sold. And the description, we might say shares of whatever stock. And then the date acquired. Now note, if they give you, if it was one or two stocks sold and you have the exact date acquired, then then that's great. But if you have multiple sales of stocks, then you might have to go into the detail and put each of those transactions in or summarize them possibly. The major thing that we need to do when we summarize them, if that's the tactic we take, is to make sure that we're categorizing long-term versus uh, short-term. So let's take like one stock, for example, first. Let's say the, the acquired date. Let's say we know what the acquired date is because they gave it on the 1099B or the sub schedules related to it is 0101, uh, let's say 00, okay? That's didn't 010100. So January 1st, 2020. So that's clearly over a, a year old. Therefore, it's going to be long term and possibly subject to the more favorable capital gain rates. I'm going to say we sold it. We would have had to sold it sometime in 2022, of course. I'll just say it's in the middle of 2022. The sales price, let's say, was 1000 but the cost, what we purchased it for, the difficult calculation, if this was stocks that were old and had splits and whatnot, uh, that's where the, the issues could come in on the cost and on the date acquired, which may require some estimates sometimes, right? So I'm going to say, let's say the cost was, was 300. And so there's a gain that was applied and so on and so forth. Let's do that for the example. Jumping to the tax forms, we now have a Schedule D that has been populated. Capital gains and losses. So if I scroll through the Schedule D, I don't have anything populated in the short term because it wasn't a short term calculation. It's a long term calculation down here where we have the 1000 minus the 300. That means the gain is $700. And there's the 700 that's going to be pulling into the 1040. So here's the form 1040. And then we've got the gain that's pulled in right there. Now, if I mirror this on the, the software over here, I can mirror this in our calculation. But remember that we've got this other issue with the tax calculation down here because we're not taxed at ordinary income because it was a long-term capital gain. So let's go back on over and say, okay, uh, let's add the Schedule D. Do I have a Schedule D? No. So I'm gonna say add, I'm gonna pull this to the right. I'm gonna do this fairly quickly because it's not an Excel course, but I'm just gonna make another sheet that will mirror the Schedule D. I'm gonna put my cursor on the whole sheet, the triangle, format it. I like to make it currency, bracketed negatives, no dollar sign, let's remove the decimals. I'm gonna make it larger and I'm gonna call this an A1. Let's say it's a schedule, my fingers aren't on the right, schedule D cap, capital, capital, gains boom and then i'm going to make this one a little bit larger and let's put it home tab font group we're going to make it black and white for the header let's do that i'm going to make the whole thing in bolden so you can see it a little bit more and then we're going to have a short term short term and then i'll have long term maybe down below long term something like that and i'm going to leave a bit of space for both of those and make this black and white and let's make this black and white i'm going to leave i'm going to make this like blue or something so let's go blue and bordered blue and bordered and then i'm going to say this was the sales price and this is going to be the cost and let's make another one and this is going to be the gain or loss gain or loss and i'm going to format this over here let's center this like so let's do the same thing down below copying this and paste it here i'll put some blue and bordered blue bordered and I'll say this is the total short term term capital gains. I'm going to sum up the outer column 
and then this is going to be the total long term cap capital gains i'm going to sum up on the outside and then we'll say this is the total capital gains or losses i should be saying but i'm going to say gains for now boom let's spell check it review and spell checky boom perfection all right so now this is a simplified worksheet because uh there could be weird scenarios when you kind of match up the short-term and long-term capital gains and so on but let's just what this is what we're going to do for now so i'm going to say okay on the sh on the long-term capital gains we sold shares and the sales price we said it was 1000 and the cost was i think 300 so the difference is calculated at that 700 which is i'm gonna have to pull back to my formula it's going to be included in line one so i need to double click on line one go to the end of it i'm going to add that whole schedule d populating it into my my summary worksheet so i'm going to say pull that in from the schedule d which is this one i need to name the worksheet this is going to be i'm going to double click on the worksheet and call this schedule d schedule d cap gains something like that so then that pulls in over here so there we have it so now we've got the now notice this is another area where where basically we had kind of you might think of an expense right because over here i had this is like the gross income and this was the cost or or what i needed to expend in order to get the income so we don't we're not going to say the gross income is pulled in we've got kind of you might call it a deduction the cost to get to the net income in essence the gain or loss which is pulled into line one of the uh, income tax formula we still have the 12,950 here that's the 87,750 which should match so 87,750 page two I'll let the calculation of the software work 14,879 so 14,879 I'm going to put the old number here so 14774 has been changed to 14879. So notice the difference between those two is now uh, 500, uh, 5105 on a $700 increase. So there's a, a $700 increase that increased the tax 105. So what's the rate on that 700? 15%. So notice here that the average rate is, is 17%. If I go back to my tax software and I say, okay, let me look at my tax summary to look at my rates, then notice the marginal tax rate is actually 22%. So you would expect that if it was applying the ordinary rate, it would be applying that 22%, but it's picking up because I'm in this threshold of the income threshold, it's picking it up at 15%, taxing at the favorable tax rate of 15% instead of the 22%. We could see that if I go to the 1040 page two and look at the worksheet here and see the calculation on the 700s kind of pulling it out separately. So that calculation is quite complex because now we have a progressive tax system and also these other types of income now including long-term the long-term benefits more than offsetting the one-time cost for capital gain, which could also include dividends that is completely separately calculated from the tax than the normal progressive rates. So you're probably not going to do that calculation yourself, but you want to be able to explain that difference on the capital gains and take into consideration that difference when doing, you know, tax planning and that kind of stuff. Now let's go back on over and let's say that it was short term. So let's say it was short term and say that the that we bought it in a uh, one January of 2022. So we sold it within a year. So now it's short term therefore same impact on the net income but the tax rates should be at ordinary income rates now it's up top at the short term portion and then if i go to the form 1040 it pulls over if i if i do that here i'd say okay now let's reflect that here i'm just going to say now it's not on the long term let's cut this and just paste it right there boom it's on the short term no difference to the first page of the form 1040 in terms of the income 
but the tax will will change. So if I go back on over and say, okay, page two, tax is now at the 14,928. So I'm gonna put the 14,14928. .14 so that minus, that means that on the $700, we had an increase of 154. So it taxed it at the 22%, which is the marginal tax rate, the highest tax rate. That's what we would expect. And anytime there's a change in income, it's gonna be taxed at that higher or marginal tax rate. Now, so that obviously gets more confusing. It's fairly straightforward here, but it gets more and more confusing if you had uh, short-term and long-term gains, right? Because in the short, if they were both gains, the short-term and the long-term uh, would be taxed at different rates. But what if you have a, a loss, like a, a short, like a like a short-term uh, gain and a long-term loss, or something like that? then when you cancel them out against each other you have that's where you get to get these funny rules because because there's different tax rates on the on the two <laughs> right so if you have multi short term and long term that cancel each other out you, you get into kind of some weird scenarios i won't dive into all of them at this point we might touch on them a little bit more later but for now i also just want to point out that if you have multiple uh if you have multiple shares if you're t t dealing with a day trader then you would have to enter like all of the shares in order to populate properly into the software. Instead of doing that, you might just you might just say this is this is the quantity, a uh, number of shares from, and you might say this is from the E-Trade, E-Trade, Trade C, attached, attached for detail or something like that. And then you could and then you could say this whole thing is going to be the short-term portion from e-trade and then you might say that you had i'm just going to summarize all the long term this is going to be e-trade which i'm not sure i spelled right e-trade long term portion and then in lacert tax software i think if you put a negative in front of these fields it'll show us a very date so i'm going to say this is e-trade and then this is uh what what is it doing there e-trade it won't let me delete that one thing long term oh my goodness e-trade c attached for detail long term negative and let's make this 010100 and negative 060622 and let's say we we sold uh you know 10 10,000 here and the cost was 3000 so so then i summarize these up and possibly attach then uh, an attachment showing all the detail if i need to to provide that detail so i'm not entering in a hundred different lines right because the major tax consequences are whether or not they're short term or long term if i make this pull over then i've got the short term which is still the 1000 minus the 300 and the long term now at the 10000 minus the 3000 so the total impact is uh, 7000 that's pulling over to the form 1040 here there's the 7700 and then if i go to uh, page two i'm gonna have that calculation on the short term and long term the long term being taxed at long term capital rates the short term at the short term uh, capital rates. Now with the losses here, just note that there's a limit on the losses. So let's take the long term and just delete the short term and let's pretend that we had a loss. So let's say we sold them for 10,000, but we bought them for 20,000, right? And so now I'm gonna say, okay, that means that I've got a loss, but this is a similar thing with the schedule C where you get where you get now i've got a loss of the ten thousand because i paid more than i sold them for i realized the loss because i sold them and there's the ten thousand dollar loss but when i pull that on over to the 1040 it only pulls over three thousand and that's because for individual filers the the capital gain losses are capped at three thousand noting that the irs like with the schedule c is skeptical of losses they want a piece of your income. They don't want to have to be taking on the risk of your losses, right? So then the question is, 
uh, you, you now you have a carryover situation where you might be able to carry over the added losses to a future year. And that's when it's quite useful to be using the same tax software from year to year because those carryovers will be quite useful. Uh, if you have a carryover situation or a more complex return, possibly a Schedule A being involved, itemized deductions, higher income levels, I would, ex I would say if you have a new client, I would take the time to put that information into the prior year software, matching what they did in the prior year so I could roll it over and have the software help me with some of these rollover type of items. Here's the capital loss carryover worksheet. So enter the amount, for, so I won't go through the whole thing, but you've got the, the 3,000 here. So you've got 7,000 long-term capital loss carryover to 2023. So if I go back up, now you've got to deal with that kind of carryover situation. If I was to populate that in my return over here, it gets a little bit messy because now I'm going to say there's, there's that. Then we have the long-term, which I said was 10,000. And the cost was, what did I say, 3,000? Is that what I said? Uh, I said 20,000. No, the cost was 20,000 20, because it's a loss. That's the point. So now there's a loss. And if I, if I net those out, that comes out to uh, 29,300 of the loss. Notice again, we still have this kind of weirdness with a short term and a long term. Actually, I removed this short term. So now we've got a loss of 3,000 and then I'd have to limit it some way down here to the loss. So I'm gonna say total, let's say this is this is limit, limit is gonna be of a $3,000 limit. So I can do an if formula that equals if, if this number is, gr is, is less than, uh, is less than, then three then if it's less than negative three thousand then comma i want you to do three thousand if not comma then it's greater than that then i want you to take that number i think that's how it works <laughs> i think i got that oh i want you to put not three thousand but a negative three thousand then i want you to put a negative three thousand so then if this was a positive number like two thousand then it would be 2000 but when it's negative it caps it at 3000 and then the carryover carryover to future 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 periods or something is now going to be equal to this minus this so i've got a 27000 carryover which i can kind of match to my schedule if i go over here i need to refix this last bit instead of coming from schedule d there I'm going to say it comes from schedule D, schedule D right there, that 3000 limit. So then I'd have to fix my worksheet like that. I won't go into that in more uh, detail than that, but that's the, that's the general idea. So the capital, the, the, the capital gains, you got to see if it's short term or long term. Usually it's going to be long term unless you've got day traders involved. And then you've got this issue with the short terms and long terms, which actually gets quite complicated when you kind of mix together the short terms and long terms. But the general idea, if it's a long term capital gain, you might have a favorable tax rate. Uh, so you want to be able to understand that and and note that you might be able to to, to match out capital gains and capital losses, which is a, a good thing to be able to understand possibly for a, a general kind of tax planning going into the future and with regards to the data input you might be able to summarize mainly bake breaking out just the short term and long term those are the major two categories that you need to break out in order to get the tax calculation correct and then prob possibly provide the irs you know with the more detail of all the transactions that make up the short term you know and long term components and then if there are substantial losses that are going to be realized then you want to be able to understand that they're, they're, the losses are going to be uh, cut. And anytime you have losses, that should kind of come to mind. The IRS might try to restrict losses. They don't like to, to pay you for losses, right? So that, that's when they are going to say the 3,000. And anytime you, you're not able to get the full benefit of a loss, the question is, can I carry the loss to some period, in this case, carrying it forward and possibly being able to take it against uh, future capital gains into the future.